Coq or Wang, French or Greek version, which is better? It's been a dispute for two days, which one is the best? So it became a food fight and we decided let's make both. Stick around to see which one's gonna win. I have here a beautiful three kilo rooster from our local butcher. I picked it up yesterday. And now we're going to disassemble that. And we will share it equally for the two recipes. Of course. <laughs> First, I'm gonna make an incision here and break down the leg so you can find the joint like that. There we go. A little bit brutal. That was better. First leg off. And then we're gonna do the same up here with the wing. And then we're gonna cut down the sides beside the breast until we heat it up here. But that we're not gonna use. No, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna save this to make broth later. I'm gonna freeze this up because we're not gonna throw anything. That's the beauty about getting a whole bird because all of this will make some beautiful broth. Then for the breasts, I want to take them off the bone. So we're just going to cut down here. And just follow the bone with your paring knife here. Then you separate easy. Nice big breast. I'm thinking that we split this in three pieces, don't you think, for the size of it? Yeah. I would say. No. So we have some good sizes for the, for the pot. Let's do the other side, find the bone. Follow it around. And there we have it. One side for the Greek version and one side for the French version. For the French version, we start out with a cold cast iron pot and I'm gonna add 300 grams of homemade pepper bacon. There's a link down below how to make that. And then we're gonna start it up on low. There we go, let me just check. Everything burning. You always want to put bacon in a cold pan or pot to let it slowly warm up so the fat renders out. If you put it in a preheated uh, pan, it will just burn instantly and you won't render the, the good fat out that you want. Look at all the beautiful bacon fat we rendered out here. That's why bacon makes everything better. Now... What do you know? You're Danish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's very true. Now we want to get the bacon out of here for a little bit. Then we will crank up the heat. We need the pot to be much warmer. There we are. Out of that. More heat. And then... We're gonna start searing off our chicken. And let's start here, skin down, side down. And we wanna leave them here to get a very good brown sear before we flip them over. We have a nice brown sear on our skin. And that's looking really good. And she gave me her wing. <laughs> yeah, but why do you leave the skin on? Because it gives a lot of flavor. Chicken and rooster is very lean meat. All the fat sits under the skin. So now I'm rendering out the chicken fat and grilling it a bit, and that gives a lot of flavor. I mean, if you want, I can take the skin of yours. Are you trying to sabotage <laughs> my recipe? <laughs> no, no, I would never do that. Now the other side is nice and brown also. Now we're gonna take our pieces out. And then I have half a kilo of mushrooms quartered that we're gonna add to our pot and let them cook down. But look here in the bottom, all that beautiful fun we have here, that's gonna give a lot of flavor to our sauce. Once they have sweated out all their water and they are browned up nicely like this, we're gonna take them out. And we are adding 25 whole shallots that we're gonna brown up here. You could use pearl onion, but I find that shallots, they have a much more interesting flavor profile than pearl onions. They are like actually a different family. The shallots is actually in the same family as garlic. Nice and slightly brown. We make a little bit of space 
And then I'm gonna take a teaspoon of chopped garlic, just to get fragrant. Just give that a quick stir around. And then it is two tablespoons of tomato paste, nice Greek tomato paste. Two tablespoons of that goes in. And we wanna mix that and we want to fry that a little bit to release the, uh, the flavors and let it stick to the onions. We want to add three to four tablespoons of flour and we're going to let that, let me see, I think three is enough. Why are you adding flour? Two reasons. I'm going to fry it a little bit now that Flour actually doesn't taste very well until you fry it a little bit. Then it gets a nice knotty flavor to the dish and then it helps thicken up the sauce afterwards. So you just want to let it toast a little bit before we continue. Uh, you think that if you make your recipe complicated, you're going to win? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just following the, as traditional as I can. Uh, yeah. I'm going to deglaze this with 50 milliliter of cognac. That will also add a little bit of extra flavor. And then I'm gonna give it a bottle of good red wine. Or almost a bottle, half a liter is what's called for here. But I like a lot of sauce, so I think we go all in. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> that is from our very beloved uh, vineyard, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. down in Peloponnese, Skouras, they make excellent wines. And now we want to bring this up to a simmer and let it release some of its alcohol. It's time for our broth. One liter of beef broth goes in. You would think that you should use chicken stock, but actually beef broth is the way to go here. And we steer that in. Like that. And then we are going to add back all our ingredients from before, our bacon. Ooh, don't forget the bacon grease, don't want to lose that. It's the good stuff. And our mushrooms. And then before I put the meat, I want to put one tablespoon of dried thyme. If you have fresh, you could put fresh sprigs, but I don't today, so I'm using a dried and it's absolutely fine. I'm gonna give it teaspoon, half a teaspoon of pepper because it's pepper bacon we're using, so I don't wanna overdo this. Um, and a pinch of salt for now. Then we will taste it for salt later and then steer that in. Last but not least, back with our meat. Did you hear how crispy that was, the skin? <laughs> That's gonna be good. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. I'm gonna win this one. I have bacon. <laughs> Yeah, that's your solution to everything. Uh, bacon bacon or bu and butter, yeah. <laughs> BB. BB. And now we're going to bring this back to a simmer, and then we're going to put it in the oven at 150 degrees for an hour. While my version is in the oven, we're going to continue with the Greek version. Yeah, that's the real deal, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm only the executioner. Here's your recipe. Tell me what you want me to do. Fry my chicken a little bit. Okay. <laughs> see if I have flames here. Oh, it's so there nice to give orders. I love it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm going to put in a little bit of avocado oil because it has a high smoke point. So we don't want to burn anything that will give a bad taste. Mm -hmm. And as requested, I have removed the skin of the rooster. So yeah. we're going to put that in. You so can use the extra flavor in your recipe of the skin. I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. And we're just gonna let that fry a little bit, as much as I did before, or less? Yeah, yeah, similar. Okay. Nice and golden brown. Let's get them out of the pot. They are looking good. And then we're going to continue straight away with eight chopped 
shallots into a pot. And now we're going to let them become translucent. Next, we're going to create a little bit of space here in the middle so we can add a tablespoon of chopped garlic and let that become fragrant. There we go. Just 20 seconds or so, 30 seconds as we usually do it. And we're going to mix those into our onions and then we're going to add two tablespoons of tomato paste. Let me get the list out of here. There we go. And we want to let the tomato paste fry for a little bit because that gives and releases a lot of aroma. Next, we add half a liter of red wine to deglaze the pan. And now we want to let it also evaporate the alcohol. For our spices, you prepared this. What is exactly <laughs> that? Okay, that's a tablespoon of cinnamon, garfunkel, bahar and nutmeg. In it goes. And then we steer that in. And I'm also going to add, what do you want, half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of pepper? Uh, ah. Yeah, max. No, 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 no. no. And then a teaspoon of salt, I would say, for now. Then we... Wow, that smells of Christmas. <laughs> you see? It's a party time. Yeah, <laughs> true. And for the sauce, we're also going to add, shall we say, half a liter? Half, yeah. Broth, a little bit more. There we go. And half a kilo of passata. Mix it all in. Mm, I can smell it already. <laughs> smells, That's the smells, shit, baby. <laughs> smells good. And then put back gonna, the chicken. Yeah, it's not, not the chicken. chicken. The rooster, sorry. It's a rooster, yeah. It's a rooster. Put that back in the sauce, and let that simmer for 45 minutes to an hour. You gotta love the simplicity of that recipe. It's right? like throw everything in a pot and walk away. Yeah, well, people are busy nowadays, aren't they? <laughs> True. My version has been in the oven for an hour now. Now I want to give it a check to see how we're doing. So let's get that out of there. Wow, that's heavy. There we are. Let's get that opened up. Mm. Ooh, that looks good. And it smells good. It smells real nice. I'm objective here. <laughs> And I think the sauce is, has the nice consistency. I don't want it too thick. I think this is nice because we're going to serve this over mashed potatoes. So you want to have a, let's say, not too thick sauce. Oh, no, it's good. Yeah. Let me give that a taste of salt and pepper just to see. Mm. That's very good. And it doesn't need any salt, doesn't need any pepper. It's good to go. We are going to close that up again. And then we are going to leave it to cool down a bit before we serve it. Let's see how the Greek version is doing here after an hour. Ooh, that smells of glühwein. <laughs> it's exactly like glühwein. For those of you who don't know what that is, that is a mulled wine we serve in North Europe for Christmas, warm with like raisins and stuff inside. And that smells exactly like that. And this weirds me out a little bit. Celebration. Mulled wine <laughs> with, with meat. Okay, let's check here for tenderness. That's perfect. The meat is just perfect. Excellent. Let me taste the sauce for salt and pepper. See, be careful. This is warm. Yeah, it needs a little bit. It needs a little bit. Okay. It didn't have the benefit of the salty bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't destroy my version. I'm not destroying anything here. It, it tastes nice, but it is a little bit weird, that meat with mulled wine. I don't know. But, <laughs> but very flavorful, I have to say. That should do it. Now we're going to cover that up and let it cool down a bit so we can plate it up. Game on. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> Let's see. So, I'm trying the French version here first. I'm going with the Greek, obviously. Mm. 
This is very nice and it's well executed. You can't say anything till okay. you try both. Okay, sorry, yeah? sorry. So, can I take some of yours? Yeah, yeah, of course. Give it a shot. Let me see. You have to be fair here. That's difficult for Greeks, by the way. Mm-hmm. Let me try yours. This is very nice, but it's not cocoa. <laughs> Because not that what I'm used to, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is cocoa bar okay, in Greece. Okay, okay, honestly. But it's a very nice dish, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying anything, no, no. you know, like, uh, but maybe the French people should try this one. <laughs> they're both very nice, but they're also so different that there it's is actually like no comparison here. East I and mean. West, I mean, which is true. Yeah. We are East, they are West, it's fine, I mean, uh, whatever. Yeah. You the know. Greek version is nice. It still has a little bit of that mulled wine thing going, but <laughs> I like it. Yeah, because you celebrate every time you eat that. <laughs> you know, it's a feast.